time now for the Mule Train News Program on this Wednesday, December the 20th, 2023. Brought to you today by Leal's Mexican Restaurant. Church service for Facundo Oliva 78 of Mule Shoe was held Saturday, December the 16th at the Immaculate Conception Catholic Church with Father Mercado officiating burial followed in the Bailey County Cemetery. Facundo died Tuesday, December the 12th in Amarillo. He was born November the 14th, 1945 in Mexico and married Domingo Toscano in Muleshoe on September the 26th, 1973. Facundo fought roosters and loved horses. He was a huge baseball fan and liked to scratch off lottery tickets. He loved music, especially Los Higueros and dancing. Facundo enjoyed gardening as well. He never met a stranger and had a huge heart. Facundo loved to make others laugh and playing with his grandkids. He is preceded in death by his parents, three brothers, Matilda Olivas, Marcelino Olivas, and Gennaro Olivas. He is survived by his wife, Domingo, two sons, Edward Olivas, and his wife, Eris of Midland, Facundo Olivas Jr., and his wife, Myra, his two daughters, Susie Guerra, and her husband, Louis of Muleshoe, Lorena Flores, and her husband, Armado of Muleshoe, two sisters, Antonio Martinez of Portales, and Juana Galindo of Muleshoe, a brother, Emilio Olivas, and his wife, Antonia of Portales, and 14 grandchildren. The family suggests memorials be sent to the Immaculate Conception Catholic Church, 805 East Hickory, Muleshoe, Texas, 79347. All line condolences can be made at ellisfuneralhomes.com. Please keep the family of Facundo Olivas in your prayer list today. Graveside service for Bobby Foley, 86 of Lubbock was held Friday, December the 15th at the Littlefield Memorial Park with DeLee Jordan of Lubbock officiating. Bobby died Tuesday, December the 12th in Lubbock. He was born March 18th, 1937 in Lamb County to Arthur Lee and Gladys Lee Carpenter Foley. He married Paula Kendall in Maple on August the 14th, 1959. Bobby served in the U.S. Army. He was a farmer most of his life. He enjoyed music and singing. He was on the board of directors at Five Area Telephone, a board member at Bailey County Electric, Maple Co-op Gin, and PCCA. He is preceded in death by his parents, two grandchildren, Caleb Heinrich and Colton Heinrich, two brothers, Art Foley and Jimmy Foley, and a sister, Jonelle Lavelle. Bobby is survived by his wife of 64 years, Paula, his son, Ron Foley of Kerrville, two daughters, Kelly Heinrich and her husband, Cliff of Lubbock, Deanne Autry, and her husband, Robbie of Tahoka, a sister, Billy Owens of Mount Pleasant, seven grandchildren, Kara Jeffers and her husband, Michael, Kanan Heinrich and his wife, Mindy, DeLee Jordan and her husband, Jamar, Chase Autry, Garrett Autry, Patrick Foley, and Randon Foley and 12 great-grandchildren. The family suggests memorials be sent to St. Luke's Children's Ministry, 3708 45th Street, Lubbock, Texas, 79413, or org backslash give and comment Central Children's Ministry. Online condolences can be made at ellisfuneralhomes.com on their website. Please keep the family of Bobby Foley on your prayer list today. Church service for Randy Burris, 68 in Lubbock, was held Last week, Friday, December the 15th, at Centerpoint Church in Muleshoe with Gary Hughes of Lubbock and Todd Turnbo, also of Lubbock, officiating burial followed in the Bailey County Cemetery. Randy died Monday, December the 11th in Muleshoe. He was born June 22nd, 1955 in Muleshoe to Reverend Bobby and Orva D. Magby Burris. He married Wendy Stice in Muleshoe June 18th. 1982. Randy never met a stranger. He was an ordained minister who loved the Lord and enjoyed playing worship music. He was a true uh, disciple and loved to talk about God. Randy also play, enjoyed playing golf. He was good at crafting and working with his hands in his shop. He was a jokester and always uh, won at Domino's and Wahoo. One of his many talents was talking like Donald Duck. Randy loved watching his grandkids play sports and being with family. He was a member of the worship center in Lubbock. He is preceded in death by his father, 
Bobby and his brother Ernest Burris and his wife Sandra. He is survived by his wife Wendy, a son Zach Burris of Lubbock, his three daughters Whitney Yoakum and husband Riley of Lavernia, Texas, Taylor Burris and her fiance Jared Mikure of San Antonio, Bailey Burris of Lubbock, his mother or- Orvidy Burris of Muleshoe, sister Paula Torbett and her husband Billy of Santa Ana, Texas, his brother Orvis Burris and his wife Sharon of Muleshoe, and four grandchildren, Scout Burris, Ryder Burris, Raleigh Yoakum, and Cash Yoakum. The family suggests memorials be sent to the Worship Center Mission Fund, 414 at 71 16 82nd Street, Lubbock, Texas, 79424. Online condolences can be made at ellisfuneralhomes.com. Please keep the family of Randy Burris on your prayer list today. Services for Robert Lee Copeland Jr., Bob, or also a lot of people in Muleshoe called him Bobby, will be at the Dallas-Fort Worth National Cemetery. Last week, they held the services at the cemetery on Friday, December 15th. Uh, that afternoon with arrangements by Eastgate Funeral Home. Robert was born January 22, 1949, to Robert Lee Copeland Sr., and Anna Burris Givens Copeland in Lubbock. He graduated from high school at Muleshoe in the class of 1967. He went on to West Texas State University. After his first year, he joined the Army in 1969 through 1971. He served his tour in Vietnam and was wounded in combat. He earned the Purple Heart and Bronze Star honors for his excellent performance during his tour. After his recovery from several wounds, which he received, He then graduated from Texas Tech University with a degree in social welfare, minors in history and English. He worked for agencies in Lubbock and then returned to Muleshoe to help his father out in his construction business. He married Susan Garner from Friona. They had been together for 38 years upon his passing, having two children, Bobby Joe Copeland and Donnie Joe Copeland. They uh, were living in Garland, survived also by one sister, Pamela Gail Cawthorn, and and her husband, Ronnie, of Winsboro, Texas, and he was preceded in death by both of his parents. Please keep the family of Robert Lee Copeland, Jr., of Garland, formerly of Muleshoe, on your prayer list. Today, again, his funeral services were held at the Dallas-Fort Worth National Cemetery last week on Friday, December the 15th. Memorial service for Jimmy Dan Wynn, 71, of Lubbock was held Saturday, December the 9th at the First Baptist Church in Crosbyton with Dr. Stacey Connor of Muleshoe officiating Jimmy Dodd Thursday, November the 2nd in Lubbock. He was born May 31st, 1952 in Roswell to Jess and Laverne Llewellyn Wynn. Jimmy grew up in Crosbyton where he was a standout basketball and football player. He loved Texas Tech athletics and was an avid supporter of all Red Raider sports. He had a passion for life and loved making people laugh, which allowed him to excel in a successful career in sales. He was always able to make people smile with an encouraging word or a funny joke joke. In his final days, his smile persisted and lit up the room. Jimmy is preceded in death by his father, Jess. He is, Jimmy is survived by his son, Justin Wynn, and fiance Nicole Varner of Washington, D.C., his daughter, Megan Overly, and her husband, Sam, and their children, Shepard and Wyatt of Little Rock, Arkansas, his mother, Laverne Wynn of Lubbock. Of course, Laverne formerly lived here in Muleshoe. His three sisters, Bobby Weir and her husband, Bill of Floydata, Judy Bruns of Lubbock, and Audrey Tipton and her husband, Sam of Lago Vista. The family suggests memorials be sent to the Anne Rescue of Crosby County, 430 North Front Street, P.O. Box 561, Crosby, Texas 79322, or the American Cancer Society, 3411 73rd Street, Lubbock, Texas 79423. Online condolences can be made at ellisfuneralhomes.com on their website. Please keep the family of Jimmy Dan Wynn on your prayer list today. 
church service for Armando Montes, 61 in Muleshoe, was held December the 4th at the Immaculate Conception Catholic Church here in Muleshoe with Father Mercado officiating. Burial followed in the Bailey County Cemetery. Armando died Tuesday, November the 28th in Lubbock. He was born May 10th, 1962 in Chihuahua, Mexico to Lorenzo Montes Fernandez and Estolia in Ahosa. He married Alicia Padilla here in Muleshoe. Armando was a mechanic, loved his job, he enjoyed listening to classical and country music. He was a huge fan of the Discovery Channel. Armando was a patient man, and he was a people person and loved to talk. Armando was a jack of all trades and was always helping others. He enjoyed being outdoors, and he loved all animals. Armando loved his family, especially his children and his roosters. He was a great dad and liked to joke with his family. He is preceded in death by his parents and two brothers. Brothers Enrique Francisco Montes and Hector Lorenzo Montes. Armando is survived by his wife Alicia, two sons Armando Antonio Montes Maris of Utah, and Santos Armando Montes of Muleshoe. Two daughters, Carla Maria Montes Maris of Mexico, and Anna Laura Montes Maris of Villa Coronado, Chihuahua, Mexico. Three sisters survive him as well, Maria de Carmen Montes. Hinojosa of, of Mexico, Maria Yolanda Manas of Mexico, and Josefina Manas of Mexico. Three brothers, Jose Francisco Montes of Mexico, Lorenzo Montes also of Mexico, and Jose Antonio Montes of Plainview, and 10 grandchildren survive him as well. Online condolences can be made at ellisfunerhomes.com. Please keep the family of Armando Montes on your prayer list today. We'll be back with more Mule Train news in just a few moments, so please stay tuned. This edition of the Mule Train is brought to you today by Liao's Mexican Restaurant. The holidays means family and old friends returning home. And when they are here in town, nothing means mule shoe more than Leal's Mexican Restaurant at 1010 West American Boulevard. The original Leal's serving authentic handmade Tex-Mex food to the mule shoe area since 1957. Victor and Debbie Leal invite you to bring all of your family and friends in during the Christmas season and relive holidays past with quality Mexican food that never changes at Leal's. For over 65 years, the memories have been made at Leal's. Do it one more time this holiday season. And everyone at Leal's and Milshi wishes you a very Merry Christmas and nothing but blessings in the new year. Texas Health Steps keep your child healthy. It's a program, health care for children through the age of 20 who have Medicaid and gives your child free medical checkups starting at birth. And you can get them through the Muleshare Medical Center. Call today. Keep your little cowboy or cowgirl healthy. If you have Medicaid insurance, call the Medical Clinic of Muleshare at 806-272-7544 to schedule your child's free medical checkup checkups can help find health problems before they get worse and are harder to treat available now free of charge for children who have medicaid insurance call the medical clinic of mule shoe again 806-272-7544 and dennis flinor and all his staff nurses and medical professionals at the mule Sherry medical center wish you a very merry christmas and a happy happy 20 24. Congratulations as on Saturday, December the 9th, four Muleshoe High School band students participated in the auditions for the ATSSB Region 16 Honor Band, and all four of the students placed in a top chair in the band, and three of the, the students have advanced to the area competition. Brian Pacheco was named first chair alto clarinet and will advance to the area. Edwin Mejia placed first chair trombone and will advance to area, and Brenna Butler will place third chair in horn, uh, and I believe that would be a French horn in uh, F or horn in F and advances to the area and Brayton Butler placed sixth 
uh, chair in Trombone. So congratulations to these four MHS students who did well on December 9th at the ATSSB Region 16 Honor Band. Bryant Pacheco, Edwin Mejia, Brenna Butler, and Brayton Butler. Well, the Mule Shoe in, uh, Volunteer Fire Department had their Christmas party, annual one, on December the 11th at the uh, City of Mule Shoe Training Facility. And they presented a 20-year recognition of service to Jerry Bruton, 10-year uh Service was presented to Raul Torres and Juan Bart Guillen, and the Mule Shoe Volunteer Firefighter of the Year was also presented to Juan Bart Guillen. So congratulations to Juan uh, as he was named the Mule Shoe Volunteer Firefighter of the Year. That's Juan Bart Guillen. Also, the f fire department was presented a check for equipment and some very nice rescue equipment from Bungie. Mike Hasley was w there on hand from Bungie to present them with this equipment and this check. And that was all at the uh, 2023 Mule Shoe Volunteer Fire Department Christmas party that was held on Monday, December the 11th. Well, this is great news out of the Santa Fe Opera. They're pleased to announce that 44 members of its 2024 Apprentice Program for Singers. The roster includes promising young vocalists from across the USA, including New Mexico and Texas, and extends to include participants from Australia, Canada, Cuba, and South Korea. The class of 2024 was selected from a pool of more than 1,000 applicants, so 44 people chose out of a thousand applicants for this program and they were chosen by program director gay letha nichols uh the manager casting an apprentice program for singers chandler johnson chief artistic officer david lamelli and chorus master suzanne sheston through a competitive pre-screening and audition process uh Says Ms. Nichols, we are looking forward to this summer's work with both new and returning apprentice singers, offering them unique performance opportunities that will advance their talents. As with all apprentice singers who spend a summer with us, we eagerly anticipate their contribution and influence on the future of opera. And a Mule Shoe native, Ryan Johnson, was chosen as one of those 44 in the tenors and uh, he is the son of Chris and Adina Johnson and grandson of Robert and Ann Johnson all of Muleshoe and that is very exciting news uh, more information on the uh, apprentice program from the Santa Fe Opera each season the apprentice singers comprise a, the chorus in main stage productions and stand ready as covers for principal artists in addition this year 28 apprentice singers will sing named roles in four out of the five productions that they have scheduled for this summer. Program participants will uh, additionally appear in two Sunday evenings of stage apprentice scenes on August 11th and 18th at 8 p.m. this coming summer. During their time at the Santa Fe Opera, each apprentice singer also has the opportunity to work with renowned voice faculty, participate in master classes with notable artists, and audition for industry leaders for major companies. And, uh, and Ryan was also one of those 28 apprentice singers that will sing in a named role. Now, he's been named to sing Giuseppe in La Travi uh, Traviata, and uh, that is a Verdi opera, and will be right at the very first of the upcoming summer schedule. I'll give you the date here in just a second where uh, he will be singing Giuseppe at the Santa Fe Opera. The ske uh, scheduled in the Santa Fe Opera 67th festival season are 38 performances, including two evenings of apprentice scenes. The company holds to its mission the time tested programming model, a balance and variety rep uh, rep uh, <laughs> repertory of new, lesser performed, and standard works. Opening on June 28th and 29th are new productions of Verdi's La Traviata, and that's the one that Ryan will be in. It's directed by Louisa Moeller. So congratulations. That's an awesome, 
awesome summer ahead for Ron Johnson. And if you've never been to the Santa Fe Opera, I would recommend it highly to go and see it. It's outside of uh, Santa Fe, set in the hills. The Opera House, it's outdoors and situated for the sunset. It's an absolutely magical place to see anything. I've seen a couple of rock concerts. In fact, I've seen Wilco there twice. And it is a magical place to go see. Along, I saw the Santa Fe Opera uh, put on uh, Madame Butterfly one time, as well at the Amarillo Globe News Performing Arts Center in Amarillo. And it was great uh, also. So that's a great um, chance uh, in a young career for Ryan Johnson as he will spend the summer as an apprentice at the Santa Fe Opera. The Baylor County Electric Cooperative Association is now hiring for a full-time accounting position, an accounting assistant applications. You must have solid understanding of accounting principles and procedures, a college degree, or a minimum of two years of prior experience as a, a billing assistant in accounts of payable or correlated fields must be proficient in Microsoft Office products, specifically in Word and, and Excel preferred. You can contact the uh, full you can see the full job description application on their website bcec.com or go by their offices here in Mulshu at 610 East American Boulevard. Well, sorry, we have just been so crazy and uh, uh, dealing with mom as well. We this is the first mule train I've uh, had a chance to do here in December and I want to apologize for that but we'll try to get this one and another one in before the end of the year we will see what happens but we have lots and lots of content new that I've continued to update on the, our front page mainly of our website MuleshoeTV.com like last uh, a couple weeks ago on December 11th we live streamed the Muleshoe City Council meeting it's under the latest videos tab at the top of our website MuleshoeTV.com we will uh, uh, remind you uh, there is a retirement reception that will be held tomorrow Thursday December 21st from 2 until 4 p.m. to honor Zaina Carpenter as she is retiring as our city secretary and a good one she has been for many years uh, employee at the city of Mulshi we hate to see her go but that uh, reception will be held at the training center there on Main Street. Zaina has been a, a loyal employee to the city since April the 27th, 2004. You can see in our uh, live stream from December the 11th, her replacement has already been hired and been on the job learning from Zaina for the past uh, couple of months, and she is in the uh, uh, live stream along with Zaina and the city manager Tamara Kane will be the new city secretary and we look forward to working with her and we think she will do a great job. Well, we've got Christmas programming that's already up, and our all of our Christmas programming this month is being brought to you by uh, saying Merry Christmas and have a Happy New Year from Bailey County Electric Cooperative Association, Barrett Potato Farms, Burton Service Center, Dell Oil Company, Muleshoe Housing Authority, McCormick Seeds, Muleshoe Independent School District, Muleshoe Animal Clinic and Vet Supply, Muleshoe Livestock Auction, WTG Fuels, Muleshoe Area Medical Center, Bammert Seeds, Shipments Body Shop and Autoplex, Precure Electric, Five Area Telephone, West Plains Telecommunications, Leal's Tortilla Factory, and High Tech Automotive. See all their Christmas greetings rotating now here in our Mule Train News Program. And they are bringing you all our Christmas programming where you can see right now on the front page, on demand, free of charge, the DeShazo third grade Christmas program that was uh, held on December 15th, it's Fa La La Land, directed by Susan White. Uh, it's available in its entirety, along with the Dillman Second Grade C Christmas Program of Snoozy Snowflake, performed December 7th. 
and directed by D.D. Smith. And uh, we'll have another video of an omnibus of the uh, Chamber Christmas Parade, along with a lot of the kids singing, a couple of different school groups singing at the Senior Center, Santa Claus down at the Senior Center, and uh, much, much more will be in our big Christmas and meals. You look for that later this week. All available free of charge at MealshoeTV.com. Well, it's time now for the weather forecast. If you'd like to sponsor our weather program, we would appreciate it very much. Your business, your group, your church or organization, you can call 806-566-5881 for more information on this sponsorship. Well, we did get some moisture last week. Is Two days, Wednesday, Thursday last week, it really stayed cooler and overcast, and it just rained very lightly. Lots of both of those days, we wound up so far in the month of December with 77 one hundredths of an inch of rain here at the National Weather Service Station in our backyard. The Muleshoe Mesonet Station uh, for the month of December so far has six tenths of an inch of rain, which puts us right below uh, 13 inches of rain for the month. So we're getting a little bit closer to our yearly average as uh, at the Mesonet Station that average is right around 17 inches of rain per year but we're still quite a bit below it and we're not going to catch up with it obviously but uh, so far in the year of 2023 we're right under 13 inches of rain on the year and right around six and seven tenths of an inch of rain for the month of December looking at the seven day forecast for meal shoe partly sunny this Wednesday afternoon, high near 65. Southwest winds around 10 miles per hour. Then tonight, a 20% chance of showers after midnight mainly. Mostly cloudy, low around 43. South-southwest winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. Then Thursday during the day tomorrow, mostly cloudy, gradually becoming sunny with a high near 61. Southwest winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. Thursday night, mostly clear, low around 35. South-southwest winds 5 to 10 miles per hour, becoming west-northwest after midnight. Midnight. Sunny on Friday, high near 65. West-northwest winds around 5 miles per hour, becoming south in the afternoon hours. Increasing clouds low around 39 for Friday night. South-southeast winds 10 to 15 miles per hour. Saturday beginning the weekend where we will head into Christmas Eve on Sunday. Showers likely with thunderstorms also possible afternoon for Muleshoe. Mostly cloudy, high near 61 degrees. South-southwest winds between 15 and 20 miles per hour. Chance of precipitation is a nice one. 70% chance of rain Saturday afternoon. So let's keep our fingers crossed. Can't get too much rain. Mostly clear Saturday night. Low around 37. West southwest winds between 15 and 20 miles per hour. Sunny on Sunday. High near 56. West winds around 15 miles per hour. Gusts as high as 25 miles per hour. Sunday night. Mostly clear. Low around 26. And of course Sunday is Christmas Eve, uh, December 24th. Christmas Day, December 25th. Monday, mostly sunny, high near 47. So a little chilly for Christmas Day. Monday night, partly cloudy, low around 22. Tuesday, mostly sunny, high near 47 again. So that's our seven-day forecast. We do have a 70% chance of rain and some thunderstorms Saturday afternoon for the Muleshoe area. So we will see what happens. That's our weather forecast here on Gillam Advertising Channel 6, Muleshoe TV. Dot com. Well, of course, we will have our church programs, but they won't be like normal this coming Sunday. The first or the Muleshoe Methodist Church will have their Christmas candlelight service on December 24th. And that's what we will bring you. And it will be Christmas Eve night before that is, because if you want to attend in person, that's at 5 p.m. in the sanctuary at the Muleshoe Methodist Church at 10 a.m. Christmas Eve morning they will have a Christmas Eve breakfast in the fellowship hall at 10 a.m. and then their Christmas Eve candlelight service at 5 p.m. there in the sanctuary so look for that if you can't make it 
sometime Saturday, uh, or excuse me, Sunday evening from the Muleshoe Methodist Church on our website, muleshoetv.com. The First Baptist Church will have their Christmas Eve memorial service in the Fellowship Hall on Sunday, December 24th, at beginning at 10 a.m. If you want to participate in the service, please notify the church office at 272-4224. Then at 11 a.m., they will have the Christmas Eve candlelight service, so you'll be able to watch that in the live stream Sunday, December the 24th on our website, the front page, MuleshoeTV.com, along with the First Baptist tab, the Christmas Eve candlelight service from the uh, First Baptist Church of Muleshoe will be at 11 a.m. Sunday, December the 24th, 220 West Avenue E, if you want to join in in person, of course. And then at the uh, Calvary Baptist Church, they'll have their normal normal 10:45 a.m. service on Christmas Eve but that will be their only service of the day and it will be again at 10:45 a.m. at the Calvary Baptist Church and uh, you'll be able to see it if you can't make it to Calvary Baptist on later on the early afternoon on Sunday December the 24th don't forget, they deliver now at Liao's in Muleshoe 1010 West American Boulevard. The original Liao's is now delivering. Call 806-272-3294. Mark on your calendar coming up fast. Next month, they have the Bailey County Junior Livestock Show already scheduled. Friday, January 19th. Uh, at the Bailey County Coliseum all day long, and uh, we will be live streaming that on our website, MuleshoeTV.com, if you can't make it. Then Saturday, January 20th, they will have the premium sale and raffle. That's all going on next month, Friday, January 20, uh, for, excuse me, January 19th, the Bailey County Junior Livestock Show for 2024 at the Bailey County Coliseum. Well, going on down at the Bailey County Senior Center, Oneida Wagner Senior Center, uh, they have one more big event before Christmas, and you'll make sure to want to go and see it. The ballet shoe will present the Nutcracker at the Bailey County Senior Center this coming Friday, December the 22nd at noon there during their lunch time we're going to be we're going to try our best to get out there to film that but uh, make sure to go and see in person as well that will be a great performance we hate we miss the meal she pickers playing christmas music today at lunchtime at the senior center but we just couldn't make it out uh, by the noon hour and uh, but we'll definitely try to be there this friday at noon for the nutcracker suite performed by uh, uh the children's ballet shoe performers and it will be at the senior center main and avenue d on friday december 22nd at 12 noon now Looking at the uh, menu at the Senior Center, tomorrow on Thursday, December 21st, they'll be serving at lunch, glazed meatloaf, red bliss potatoes, breadsticks, mixed vegetables, country apple crisp. On Friday, they'll have their usual fish or chicken strips on the menu. Then on Christmas Day, Monday, December 25th, they'll be closed along with Tuesday, December the 26th. They'll open back up at the Senior Center on Wednesday, serving their uh, usual chicken fried steak meal, mashed potatoes, country gravy, stewed okra, seasoned corn in a pumpkin square. On Thursday for lunch on December 28th, beef fajitas, refried beans, Spanish rice, tossed vegetable salad, locale French dressing, peach cobbler, and a flour tortilla. And then Friday, December the 29th, uh, their normal fish or chicken strips, borracho beans, green peas, tossed vegetable salad, locale French dressing, whole wheat roll, and a tropical fruit mix. That's all at the Bailey County Senior Center, Main and Avenue D, right here in Muleshoe. Well, 
Well, the Muleshoe Independent School District will begin their Christmas break uh, coming up tomorrow. They'll have a half day, and uh, Dillman will release early at 11.45, DeShazo 11.50, junior high at noon along with high school. So look for lots of excited kids getting out for the Christmas break tomorrow, Thursday, December the 21st here in the Muleshoe area. And their Christmas break begins in full December the 22nd. School won't resume again until January the 10th at normal time. So a nice big break for the Muleshoe schools. And of course, tomorrow, or this uh, tomorrow morning um, on Thursday, Dillman uh, will have all of their Christmas parties and that will be so much uh, fun. And uh, the Christmas break begins Friday, December the 22nd. Well, on your prayer list today, please remember our good friend and our longtime play-by-play -play announcer, Bob Graves, as he is a patient uh, in our local Muleshoe Area Medical Center. Please keep Bob Graves on your prayer list today. Remember as well, Gary Don Freeman and Robert Johnson, Joe Bledsoe, Randy Kane, Kaylin Kaufman, Richard Kaufman, Elijah Kaufman, Renee Copley, Paul Hammer, Lonnie Lawrence, Eddie Morris, Cleta Robertson, Scott Saylor, Missy Spratlin. Jerry Bruton needs to be on your prayer list today. Carrie and Pat Moore, Daryl Embry, Melba King. Tom and Linda Watson, Dorothy Wire, Betty Noble, and Joe Jinks, Cliff Black, Rowena Myers, Terry Byers, Suzanne Nickel. Please keep those who, uh, family have recently lost a loved one. Always hard during this uh, holiday season. The family of Facundo Olivas, the family of Bobby Foley. The family of Randy Burris, the family of Bobby Copeland, the family of Jimmy Dan Wynn, the family of Mar Armando Montes, the family of Roy Angel Dua, the family of Tommy Bratcher, the family of Clarence Edward Mason, the family of Marjorie Morgan, and the family of Andy Olivas Alfaro. Well, it's time for us to go on this edition of the Mule Train News Program, brought to you today by Leal's Mexican Restaurant. You can hear our latest Mule Train News Program, along with all our older archive ones up to a decade old, free of charge on demand on our website, MuleshoeTV.com. Click on the Mule Train News link at the top center of the page. I'm Tumbleweed Smith. We'll hear from an expert on Iris in a moment on The Sound of Texas. The Sound of Texas is brought to you here on MuleshoeTV.com by Bailey County Electric Cooperative Association with offices in Muleshoe at 610 East American Boulevard as well as in Morton at 1744 State Highway 114. They're celebrating rural electrification right here in the Muleshoe area through Bailey County Electric since 1939. They're owned by the members that they serve. Call 806-272-4504. Check them out online at BCEC. COOP.com, the board of directors, the members, the employees, the manager, CEO, David Markle, all hope you enjoy this Sound of Texas with Tumbleweed Smith. Rudy Fox of Denton has a garden full of iris. He says the flower comes in many varieties. No one person could ever hope to own all of them because there are hybridizers all over the United States and other countries as well. But I do try to buy some of the new introductions every year. He says an iris will grow only in certain climates. The tall bearded iris will not grow south of New Braunfels, for instance. It doesn't get cold enough. They might grow all right, but they don't bloom. And people in Houston keep wanting to have them, but they don't bloom there either. Sometimes they bloom the first year because they haven't gotten acclimated. The second year, maybe one or two out of 50 will bloom. The third year, none will. What do you like about Iris? Well, of course, you've heard the old saying that Iris is a poor man's orchid. But to me, they're much more beautiful than orchids, mainly because orchids have no odor to speak of, and every Iris has a fragrance of its own. They usually are quite easy to take care of. I love the shape. I love the 
various subtle changes from one color to another, and the various startling contrasts. You can get some that are white on top and almost black on the bottom petals. What makes a good iris? A beautiful bloom that opens up and the petals at the top stay closed rather than flopping open like so many varieties do. A good proportion between the top petals and the lower ones that are called the falls. And then of course the color is very important. Probably most of all is the sturdiness of the stem so that they don't fall over every time the wind blows a little bit. And also the bud count, how many buds will come on each stalk. How long does an iris bloom? Well, a good iris is open about three days. A few may even be open longer than that. But it's always easy to tell when you have irises whether they're good. If they close up the second day, you know that's one you ought to get rid of. Rudy Fox of Denton. His garden is a blaze of color in late April and May and attracts a number of visitors every year. I'm Tumbleweed Smith with the Sound of Texas.